the modern world of multitasking, the least important thing we feel to do is eat mindfully. Most of us pair up our eating time with some or the other activities and never give attention to what we eat or drink. Most of us think that eating healthy food nourishes our body with required nutrition and taking timely pills helps us to cope up with all our health conditions. But that's not totally true. Because the nutrition in the food we eat does not equal to the nutrition we get out of it unless we have a perfect functioning gut. The amount of nutrition that reaches our body depends on our rate of digestion and also the rate of absorption. My parents and grandparents always encourage me to treat food with a sense of reverence by quoting Annam para Brahma Swarupam. This quote has been there all along in our ancient scriptures which translates to food is the ultimate reality corresponding to the absolute. If we give focus to our food, be mindful about it and contemplate it, then we have a greater sense of energy and the amount we extract and absorb from it. It has been proven scientifically that people who are mindful about eating have better time digesting them and absorbing the nutrients. Wondering how we can practice mindful eating? Let me share a few tips that you can use daily. Tip 1. Observe your hunger. Eat only when your body demands, not when your mind craves. Tip 2. Be present. Let go of all the technology and employ all your senses to this task. Tip 3. Express gratitude and reflect on how the food came to your plate. Tip 4. Savor the aromas, texture and taste. Tip 5. Listen to your stomach and not your plate. Eat until you are full. Don't overeat. Tip 6. Eat slowly by chewing properly. What matters most is your state of mind and source of attention when you are eating your food. Paying attention to the moment to moment experience of eating can help improve one's diet, manage food cravings and even lose weight. Mindful eating would aid to stimulate lot of enzymes that would help the process of digestion and also the absorption. This means we would have increased supply of life force energy. Remember, nourishment only comes from mindful eating of quality food. Proper breathing goes by many names. It can be called diaphragmatic breathing, abdominal breathing, belly breathing or deep breathing. When you breathe deeply, the air coming through your nose fully fills your lungs and you will notice that your lower belly rises. The ability to breathe so deeply and powerfully is not a new skill to be acquired. The skill is inborn but often lies dormant. Reawakening it allows us to tap one of our body's strongest self-healing mechanisms. In these modern days, we all tend to take sips of breath. This sipping of breath is termed as shallow breathing. In fact, 70% of modern ailments can be linked to wrong breathing habits of people. From poor digestion to anxiety, low immunity to lethargy, hormonal imbalances to premature aging, all can be due to poor breathing habits. The act of breathing engages the diaphragm. As we breathe in, the diaphragm drops downward, pulling our lungs with it. It further presses against our abdomen to make room for our lungs as they expand to fill with air. As we breathe out, the diaphragm presses back upward against our lungs, helping to expel carbon dioxide. Many small blood vessels, instrumental in carrying oxygen to cells, reside in the lowest portion of our lungs. Shallow breathing hobbles the diaphragm's range of motion. It will not allow these blood vessels to get a full share of oxygenated air. This makes one feel short of breath and anxious. 
deep abdominal breathing encourages full oxygen exchange, which is the beneficial trade of incoming oxygen for outgoing carbon dioxide. This makes one feel relaxed by removing the anxiety and lowering the stress levels. Hence, practicing proper breathing would aid in boosting the levels of prana within us. For this, we need to bring our focus on our belly expansion and contraction for every inhale and exhale. This might seem challenging, but for sure is achievable by disciplined practice. I also struggled initially to get it right when I started. It seemed hard to feel my belly expand when I inhale. At such times, I first exhale with my belly contracted and then the right pattern would fall in place for the subsequent inhalations and exhalations. After a few months of conscious practice, proper breathing got integrated with my regular breathing. Human body consists of trillions of cells. Cell is the body's smallest unit of life and forms the building blocks of our life. Cells vibrate with the frequency of our emotions and generate the desired levels of energy. When we smile, trillions of cells vibrate with the emotion of smile or happiness and hence increase the levels of prana. Similarly, when we feel sad, trillions of cells vibrate with the emotion of sadness and hence decrease our levels of prana. Human mind is constantly thinking which gives rise to numerous thoughts. A thought becomes positive or negative when an emotion is applied on it. Similarly, the life force energy is always the same. We make the levels high or low based on our cellular vibrations. High or low levels of prana is therefore dependent on our internal and external environment. Consider a scenario of going out for a walk in the evening. The weather is breezy and pleasant, we will feel very energized. But if the weather is sunny and humid, we will feel low in our energy levels. The same way, our internal environment is dependent on our emotions. Positive emotions bring about positive vibration in our cells and negative emotions bring about negative vibrations in our cells. We may not have much control over our external environment, but for sure can control our internal environment. I further understood that be positive and think positive is not practically feasible as it is against the nature of mind which is to wander around with thoughts. All of us experience negative thoughts. We need to understand that we cannot eradicate negative thoughts, but we certainly can work on the way we deal with them. If we dwell for a long time on a negative thought, it will draw us into a negative spiral, lowering our levels of prana. If we dwell on a positive thought for a long time, it will create positive vibrations, hence increasing our levels of prana. The moment we are stuck with a negative emotion attached to our thought, we immediately need to rewire it such that our thought gets attached with a positive emotion. It is the same rewiring technique we use for electrical wires when flow of electricity is not proper. Let me quote my personal example. Yesterday, I went to pick up my favorite toffee at home. When I checked the box was empty, I felt very sad. Immediately, I shifted my mind to think about the yummy home-baked brownie I ate the same morning. This made me feel happier and I didn't bother about the finished toffees. This kind of rewiring our subconscious mind from negative emotion to positive emotion would aid in boosting the levels of prana. Another thing which I learned and felt beneficial in this emotional shift is for smiling. When you are displaying negative emotions, try to smile and hold the smile even though you don't feel like doing it. It seems very awkward. But your cells are so intelligent and would associate your smiling to happiness and hence they vibrate with positivity, aiding in your emotional shift. Hope you have understood that thought is a thought and energy is energy and they become positive or negative with our applied emotions.
Visualization is the technique of seeing our goal as already complete in our mind's eye. Visualization is powerful because it harnesses the power of our subconscious mind. When we visualize goal as complete, it creates a conflict in our subconscious mind between what we are visualizing and what we currently have. Our minds are hardwired to resolve such conflicts by working to create a current reality that matches the ones we have envisioned. Visualization activates the creative powers of the subconscious mind, motivating it to work harder at creating solutions. You'll also notice new levels of motivation and find yourself doing things that normally you would avoid, but that will take you closer to success. My mother started getting trained in athletics from 2016. Her coach, Mr. Jason Wong, recommended her to take up hurdles, recognizing her plyometric skills and flexibility. She was a bit hesitant but could not say no to her coach. So she started to train. During her initial days of training, she had a lot of preconceived notions like hurdles are difficult and that they are injury prone and so on. She always doubted herself if she would really be able to clear the hurdles smoothly at that age. Every time she used to run to the first hurdle, she used to slow down and hesitate to run over them. Her coach understood the issue she was undergoing. He approached her and told her that he is pretty confident that she would be able to clear the hurdles smoothly. Furthermore, he taught her an exercise called mental rehearsal which was used by athletes since 1960s. The exercise was that she had to mentally visualize herself clearing the hurdle smoothly without any hesitation as many times as possible. After practicing this exercise for a couple of weeks, my mom noticed that she was not only able to clear the first hurdle but the full set without any hesitation. Mental rehearsal exercise is nothing but a technique of visualization which has been used by successful people for ages. It can be used by each and every one of us. All of us have this awesome power, but most of us have never been taught how to use it effectively. Daily practice of visualizing your goals and ambitions as already complete can rapidly accelerate your achievement of those goals and ambitions. Hope you have understood how the technique of visualization leads us to an empowered state. Thank you for watching and start practicing the technique of visualization. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe if you like this series. Namaste.